y'all, I've been meaning to make a video about how to row and the points of performance of using a rower for so many years. And I finally invested in a rower of my own and I'm so excited to be able to share this with you um, as well as with my clients going forward. And I wanna start by saying it doesn't matter what type of rower you have, a Peloton, Concept2, a water rower, the, the basic principles of rowing technique are the, basically the same. So why should you listen to me? Well, first of all, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a physical therapist. I've been working in the sports and performance rehab space for over 20 years. I also ran my business out of one of the best CrossFit gyms in the world, CrossFit Roots for about a decade. So I had incredible mentoring when I started on movement quality for all of the sort of functional barbell movements, gymnastics movements, and endurance sports movements from their perspective, from head coach Nicole Christensen and from um, former professional rower uh, Lauren Rubini. So I, I really feel lucky that early on when I first started rowing, because while I've been an endurance athlete my whole life and done a ton of racing, I've never rowed for real on the water. But I feel lucky that I had such great mentoring early so I could really pattern in good habits um, as I started to learn how to use this machine and get the benefits from it. Such an incredible whole body workout. One of the things I try to share with my audience as well as with my clients is this idea that when you start anything, movement quality is sort of the first step. Um, generally, you want to start pa patterning in really good movement habits, then you want to add repetition, then you want to add intensity, which is speed or weight. Um, and if you can start from this foundation of moving really well and understanding the points of performance of any movement, including the rower, not only are you going to make better fitness gains, but you're also going to enjoy it more and it's much less likely that you're going to injure yourself or have pain as you're doing so. So I'm gonna skip the parts about how to set this up, assuming that you already have a rower or you can just watch the instructional videos from the company, whichever rower that you're using. What I wanna talk about here is movement quality. That's the, the thing I want you to take away from this video. So I like to think of rowing uh, as being very similar to a deadlift. And for those of you who have deadlifted before, um, th the reason I think they're similar is because when you start from the catch of the row, it's kind of like being at the bottom of a deadlift. And when we stand up a deadlift from the floor, the first thing we want to do is establish the right spinal position, um, right? So, you know, it doesn't mean you have to be totally erect. A little bit of flexion is, is okay. You know, I don't want you like this. But you want to be as erect as you can, as, as erect as in your spine as your hips will allow you to get. And of course, as you use it, you'll find that you probably gain mobility over the course of time. Once you've established that, the first thing you're going to want to do to start pulling on the handle is not bend your elbows. And this gets a lot of people into trouble. They want to start here, right? What's interesting about the row is it's mostly a leg workout. The arms don't really pull until the very end, which you'll see in a minute. So the first joint to move here is my knees. All I'm going to do is straighten my knees, which is going to bring my hamstrings on tension, I'm going to engage my posterior chain as my quads work. And so the first Maybe third of the movement is just my knees straightening. Notice my back doesn't really change position at all. I'm not letting it flex, right? I'm not letting it um, start to, to hinge back yet. I'm just straightening my knees to get them to this point, pulling straight out on the handle, okay? The second movement, once I have my knees straight, is to extend my hips. So the next third of the movement is really just this extension of the hips, just like the deadlift, right? This is me standing up the deadlift. I'm gonna come back as far as I'm comfortable, as far as sort of my abs can tolerate. And then the last part of the movement, after I've built a ton of momentum in my pull, is to pull the handle in right below my chest, okay? And I like to sort of bring it right to my chest. Notice my shoulder blades at this point are are really engaged, almost like I'm trying to break the handle around my chest like this. My elbows are pulled in, they're not high like this. I'm in this real strong, powerful position. As soon as I hit the end, the first thing I'm gonna do is relax my arms. So it really is a quick pull in and then a quick release out. And then I'm gonna go back in the reverse order. So now I'm gonna hinge my hips. I'm gonna feel my hamstrings kind of go back on tension again, right? I'm just hinging my hips, but my knees don't bend yet, okay? And then when I get to here, then my knees start to bend 
to come back to the catch, to come back to the start of the row. So it's knees, hips, arms, arms, hips, knees. Now what'll happen if you don't do it that way, if you wanna start bending your elbows and extending your hips early as your knees get in the way, we want this chain to stay on a straight pull all the way out so it doesn't get wobbly, it doesn't go side to side, it doesn't make a lot of noise. So I don't wanna to have to go over my knees, right? On the way out or on the way back. If I'm bending my knees, they get in the way and then I have to go over them. It's much less efficient, okay? Now, um, breaking this into three parts is a little awkward at first. I'd encourage you to kind of go slow and just feel it out. Um, again, you're trying to make it a habit so that when you start to row, it feels much more smooth and it happens naturally. The one thing that I have the hardest time remembering is not the sequence on the way out here, but the sequence on the way back in where I'll extend my hands and my knees will want to bend before my hips start to come forward. And it's not the end of the world to kind of do it all as one movement, but I like to be really intentional about hands, hips, knees, just because of how it carries over to all of these other movements. Knees, hips, arms, arms, hips, knees. And you can see how that chain doesn't deviate off of its path at all. Just like the barbell on a deadlift won't deviate off its path at all as you're pulling it off the ground. Now, a few other, I think, really important details. When I first started, my hips were stiff enough that it was a bit hard for me to maintain a nice spinal position, a nice strong spinal position. I, again, I'm not, I'm not worried about your spine flexing a little bit because I'm worried you're gonna hurt it because we know the research doesn't really support that. And there are plenty of people that deadlift with a little flexion in their low back and they're actually stronger that way. Um, I'm most interested in you getting the, the, the maximum range of motion and power out of your hips because the hips and the legs are really what drive this movement most of all. Um, I just got a call recently from a client who had elbow tendonitis because they were focusing too much on the pulling part of the row and they weren't using their legs. So the arms were doing way too much work, burning their arms out, starting to get pain in their elbows. And of course, you all know from me talking about pain, this is their brain saying, hey man, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> it's time to rethink your technique, which is another reason I'm making this video. So anyway, to come back to my spinal position, I, I used to let my knees drop out, similar to the way I might um, think about my squat. So if you're used to squatting in this position with your knees pushed out wider than your feet, um, it's not too much of a stretch to understand why you might benefit range of motion wise or even strength wise from having your knees a little wide at the start of your row and then at the at the end of your row, they come back together, right? Quads tighten. So as I come to my catch, I might take my knees really wide so I can be in that nice, strong, powerful, pushing, pulling position. The other thing that's really important is to call out is the shoulder blades because um, to get the maximum catch, you'll see a lot of high level rowers let their spine round and let their shoulder blades come forward so they can get the longest pull possible, okay? And if you're, looking to perform at an Olympic level, you can, you can go to this extreme. But what I really think is important, regardless of how deep you, you hit the catch and where you start your pull, is as quickly as possible, I want you to reestablish, come from protraction where your shoulder blades are forward, to reestablishing shoulder blade retraction, right? So you have a nice solid foundation that you can pull from by the time you get to the end. So if it doesn't happen right away, I definitely want it to happen by the time you reach here. So when you pull, you have this like Superman ripping the chest open kind of feeling in your body, okay? So I'm gonna come forward. I'm gonna let my shoulder blades protract a little bit because I want a long pull. My knees might go out to make more space for my hips. And then as I work my way out, if I don't do it right away, if I don't establish this right away, I'm going to gradually pull my shoulder blades in so they're ready when I start my pull. A couple other details that I really like to think about as you start to dial in the basics with your row. One is 
when you get back to the end, and again, you're trying to maximize the length of your pull at the end, you're gonna be hinged back pretty far, which almost puts you into like a crunch or a sit-up type position. So I like to maintain the same spinal position here as I had here. Right? I don't fall back into flexion. I don't hyperextend. I'm in this nice neutral position. And I'm being very intentional about engaging my abdominals in, drawn in like a corset tightening around your waist. And if I can time that with my exhale, that's gonna help me be nice and tight at the end to maximize the benefit in my midline for the end of that pull. And then of course, then to start me back up with my hips to recovering, right, from each movement. So um, it's not always possible to time your exhale so that you hit it at the end. But um, after I exhale, I'll typically inhale as I'm coming back toward the catch, which you'll see um, when I do my row here in a minute is, is a relatively slower phase of the movement to get you ready for that next explosive pull. I try to aim for 30 strokes per minute or a little bit less, um, especially when I'm doing really hard intervals like five, 250s, 500s, and even 1,000 meter rows. When I'm, when I'm focused on pulling at a really high intensity, I like to maximize the strength of my pull and then sort of s s recover more slowly. But I think that rate um, plus or minus is about what you wanna shoot for um, as opposed to this really fast, um, you know, quick, rapid pulling, which can, even though the force might not be as high with each pull, um, <laughs> you might find you wear yourself out. So here's what it looks like in action and fast speed. If you want to slow down the video so you can see how my sequencing looked, that's great. I'm going to do my best to do it the way I explained it. Um, I'm always sort of warming up with my intention on these points of performance that I'm describing so that when the workout starts, I don't have to think of it as much. But it's really like any functional movement you do, there is a certain amount of intention I think you need to put into it every time um, for months and even years until you gain mastery and you feel like you're, you're just doing it without thinking about it so much. So there you go, that's all there is to it. I'd pick one or two things every time you row to sort of focus on and just really try to dial that thing in. You might even choose to focus on a different variable or movement pattern with every interval that you do during a given workout so that eventually it all just comes together. Hey, I really appreciate you all tuning in, watching to the end. Take a second to follow me if you don't already. Leave a comment or a question or any insightful, other insightful tips that you might have based on your experience um, in the comments or in the chat. And I wish you many efficient, fast, and fun kilometers ahead this year on your rower.